like the video and subscribe for it every Wednesday, sometimes Friday and always on Sunday. Today I get asked a lot of questions um, about milking process and the cows and the car and I wanted to make a new milking video because I made one, I've made a few of them but I want to make a new one just to show what I'm doing at the moment and why I'm doing what I'm doing and why I'm milking cows in the first place and what the cows are doing, what the cows are doing hard or to set up what it is and just my milking routine. Um, tomorrow I'm milking and it's a bit wet outside so but I think it's good all nice again it's not too bad there's two three days of rain and it's clear up again. Um, so we're gonna start off on clusters and stripping the cows. Um, first of all all our milk goes to market so we don't if people ask me do you sell milk yourself, do you sell raw milk? Black farm through that, this black farm instead of directly to the consumer, yeah I don't do that. My milk goes into the market, it's collected every three days by Kerry Agri business. If people around the world probably know Kerry Agri, or Kerry Group I should say, Kerry Group, they collect that and that goes into the market. That's what we do, we don't do our own milk process or anything like that. A lot of people ask, but I don't. Anyway, let's get cracking. I always do, I just took the cows once in the morning. I don't really like it sometimes, but I'm just basically checking for mastitis. And anything like that. And it's just getting, it's just getting the cows ready for milk and just kind of lets the milk let down process that bit easier.
that's the, the oldest cow in the herd. She only has three quarters. Quarters being each individual and half of the other. She should be four with some nice three. And she's actually born like that. So I have a dummy teeth here. Camera fell. Sorry. And she's the oldest cow in the herd. She's come up 13 now. She's in calf again, so she'll be staying. Not many cows, cows are on like that. So and now I'm gonna leave the next side then. We up the yard. It's always a big rush in the morning. They always align the milking powder. And the same process again. This pan always get mucky. Very mucky actually, I'll come back to her. Same process again, just nice and easy. Only in the morning. I don't do this in the evening, I only do it once. I feel like I only have to do it once, and it gives the cow's time a break from it as well. There's a car on here now, either I don't know what she done. So, I'm gonna clean her up a tiny bit. I use paper towels and get them in your local co op or whatever. Um, does the job really. Let's go again, guys. I find that the cows, I don't wash the cows in the summer because obviously the outside they're clean. Or in the autumn, no, no, more or less. Um, always the winter routine. I will do a video on the winter routine again. So, she's pretty clean. We want to keep the cows as clean as possible from the milking because you're producing food at the same time. If you're producing food, you've got to keep it good and clean. Put two sides in. It's a bit horrible out here today, but it could have worked. Wait for the last cow to come in. And I normally leave two sides in just to free up the yard. It just gives the yard a bit more, if you're not stuffing them in. I'm collecting the yard probably a bit small at the moment. Probably will extend this, but just the job at the moment, you know. Just even hurrying now. No panic. Cows are really slow this time of the year. They're actually mortally slow. It's, you know, it's that time of the year now. I didn't get slow. It's just, wake up now, you wake up now in the morning, you just jack outside, you're like, oh, do you know? Perfect. Now, do a bit of powder history, as they say. I get it asked every day. Oh no, we can't actually do the covenant. Next we're going to spray them on with tea spray. This is Dillaval Primer. It's, I use all, I only use, I only use Dillaval products. Same brand as the different machine. That's all I use. I don't use anything else. Um, I think they're the best to be honest. I rather just stick to the main manufacturer. Dillaval's great gear, it's great tack, it's good quality. So I always try and stick to the one thing. And it does the job for me. Second is low, I'm happy with it. Then, it just works. No mixing has no diluting it, it just works. That's for this side, that one's fat side. And away they go.
beers start to play cooler, that cools the milk on the way in. It works by water, the water cools the milk on the way in. That's what that does. Um, try to get a bigger one when we up here up here in the past, it's small, just a dog. And the reason I let the milk out here when I am I, I wasn't messy, but there was water left in the line, but I can't get out of the line. They got clicked this morning, that's why I just turned on the tank now. That will bring it down to about under 4 degrees before then the milking. And more rain. Now, time to make some more cows. Nice bucket. All cows are getting about two kilos of ration a day, or meal, or cake, or nuts, whatever you want to call it. And they're getting two kilos a day because they have plenty of grass, so there's no point feeding them extra. And it all comes from the wheelbarrow here. It comes from the meal bin, and I fill it every time I come out. Pop it up. So, a bit of history on the parlour. This parlour was built in 1979. It's a 60-unit herringbone milking parlour. And it's a Dill Laval. But if you go back to then, it was Alpha Laval. And our boat tank is big as well as well. So we're big Laval fans. The feeders don't work. And they are actually not operational. Come on, guys, get up, come on. So, might be a bit of a pain, but it doesn't really bother me. There is just, one second, I'm going to tie this rope back here. Okay. There is just over 50 cows going through at the moment. Um, that's about, there are seven cows dried, dried because, um, obviously we had a few day carvers last year. They were making nothing at all, so I dried them off. Quiet. You can think about what you're doing for the day. You can plan your day out and just relax, really. You know, you just have a morning of the year and early and just the nicest feeling. It's probably the best job in the world. I know it has its perks and it has its downsides, but it's a pretty good career. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, just and you love it, it just, makes, it just makes it so much easier. So we're also halfway through the cows now. Um, bit back around the cows, there's a lot of new viewers in the channel. We've nearly gotten a thousand subscribers in the past month, so big thanks, the keeps me going. There's a lot of new viewers, and a lot of new, <laughs> there's a lot of new messages coming in. Um, and people want to know things, and they want me to do this and that, and um, I suppose, I'll have to give a bit of background on the cows for the new viewers. For all the old viewers, they try to listen to me about the cows, but um, for the first to the guys who have been following me, to, to all the people who have been following me from day one, um, our cows, they're all black and whites, but a few jerseys mixed in. Um, they're all, most, they're all British Friesian type cows. And there's a few hog flying Friesian crosses in the herd as well. Yeah, the Jersey crosses in the herd. I like British Friesian cows. They, throw good, they have good calves, good milkers, they're healthy, they're good feet, and it's a strong bread cow. That's why I like our British Friesian. 
Jerseys have great solids as well. Have, they have great milk solids. They have great fees. They have low maintenance. House are good as well. The house time freezing crosses. They have great milkers. They have great milk and great solids as well. So that's kind of my cow type. I probably moved towards British region more in later years, but for now I was trying to get the genetics up and get the milky look and the solids. Our cows at the moment are making about 17 litres a day. It's that time of the year they're scaling back a lot now. They're coming to lactation. In the peak summer, in peak, which is May, April, May, June, they, they all vary. Some cows are doing 30, some cows might do over 30, some cows might only do 20. But the average would be about 25 litres a day. Average. That's what they average, all the cows average. Get more nuts in. And I'm kind of happy with that target. I don't want to push them too much. I don't want to go into a big scale feeding system where if you give them tons of meal. I try and feed my cows about 700 kilos of meal per cow per year. And as the time goes on, as time goes on, we might even get that down to about 500. So, you know, we want to try and cut back. Hopefully, our meal feeding in the future and have the same output and output per cow. That's my plan. Has not really changed in 40, over 40 years since it's been here? Uh, my dad did install a straight bar, as was a zigzag bar there. Come on, guys, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Come on, come on. My dad didn't draw a straight bar there. He put the bar across the top there to, to, to secure it. And he also sorry. He also put in manger manger trucks. The trucks he also put them in, and he put a new floor in the pit and a new drain out of the mixing powder as well. That's probably 15 years ago now. But still, that was a big improvement what we had because we were getting kind of shabby that stage and that rebrought the powder up. You know, but I, we service it ourselves, we look after it, we mind it, and this makes all the difference, you know, when you look after it. Because it's still here, it's still doing the job, it's most, like I said before, it's the most important machine on the farm. Like, forget the tractors, forget balers and mowers and tankers and all that. If this thing is wrong, you won't make any money. <laughs> so this thing has to be right. That's the most important thing. If it's wrong, nothing's gonna work. <laughs> and that's why I keep telling myself, you know, mine the making powder, it's the most important machine in the farm. I often tell myself that. No, that's the second last spot there. I'll leave the last spot in here and then we'll wrap up as they say. So we're seeing the last side in now. Oh my god, heifers in this round, a lot of them. Come on, girls. I know I have to open all these gates just just for yard scraping. There we are. So I also opened them gates like a finished building. <laughs> Now, last side. This cow actually has a touch of mastitis. She's high cell count in last minute recording. And she's actually out of the tank. 
Um, like I said, that's what jars are handy because you can hold the milk and off and you can leave it into buckets. There's no hook, there's no hook up like a, a dump bucket up, up the milk line and all that. Uh, not, so that. not saying that that's any hassle, but if I ever do put in a new powder, I'll probably have to go to that system because I probably won't have jars because I don't think jars are working here with a new powder. Probably it went for more units. I got dirty now again, so we get more paper for her. You just lie into the muck, guys. You just lie into it. There we are. Don't blame me, you're the one who lied into it. <laughs> So, I put some units on these now. So, least favorite cow. Every single milking, morning, evening, no matter. She'll always do it. No matter what. Always. So I'm that cow thing now, I was into a bucket. That is a good thing about jars. I will say, that is the only thing about them. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure too many people actually put in jars anymore to make them powders. I don't think they do. Any new powders, these are always direct line anyway. Direct line is being, it's just one big tube and the milk all goes in. So, that's direct line. But the jars are pretty good too. I have no problem with the jars. Come on. That is milking finished for the morning. I get asked a lot of questions too about people asking me, do you think that I should, they ask me that they have so much land and they have this and should I get into cows and, you know, I don't know how to answer them questions guys sometimes because, you know, I don't want to advise anyone or anything, I don't know how to answer them but I think if you've got enough land and you can just go for it, why not go for it? I know things are uncertain at the moment with everything but like how uncertain are they going to be like? We all have to eat, so it has to come from somewhere, so I don't know, it's hard to know what future holds, but anyway, I'm not going to talk about that. So this part, of the, this part of the way it works, its pulsation is um, two by two, so let's say two of them, two work, two sucking it out of the cow, and then once that they're done, they're just stuck in the cow. That's the that, that's the basic way of putting it. Um, some milking parlors they do four by four, so they're all moving together. Um, I personally am a fan of the two by two. I think it's better. Um, no, I'm sure there's no problems with any of them parlors, but I just rather the two by two. Really, to be honest with you, I think there's a better job than making out the cow. Um, cluster movers. A lot of people ask me, do I have cluster movers? Before I've made this video, um, no, we obviously we need to put them into this parlor. I think that will cost a lot of money, and I did price up a few things to do with this parlor over the years, and very expensive to do with some small things. But I think the attitude by people is just put in a new milking parlor. That would say that's fine too, and they're probably right. But Grant, that are there now on things. Um, one thing I would put in put in a new milking parlor is. A teeth spray, coil hose. So the drop down hose is that you have in the parlor and they have teeth spray in them. I think that's one thing that I would do properly. That would save me a lot of time. And just be cool to have it. Just be a better system. It's kind of a little bit of Thanks for the mess, girl. Appreciate it. And the last one is milk. Now, wash of time.
pad or off to look after washing. These are called wash jetters and the water comes up down up through these and up through here as well. And wash all the lines and the jars and all that. So let's get the water run through its cycle and get the milk lines all washed out. Guys, my GoPro battery died at time. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, I'm all finished now. Um, I have the yards all washed down and the cows are locked into the field. Um, that was morning milking. Um, it's just a new video that I wanted to do just to, mightn't be any better than the rest of them, but it's just a new video to kind of update the new viewers on what happens in the farm and just swap the cows and my, my milking routine because I get asked a lot of questions about it and trying to cover for things the powder size and how long the powder's been built and the history of it and um, I suppose another question people ask me will I upgrade the powder oh yeah I will eventually yeah I will that's definitely on the on the wish list we definitely will do something with the powder the dairy's done the dairy won't be touched ever again probably and um, the tank is here the tank is 8,000 litres so that's plenty of that's plenty of storage for me probably I think anyway I should have enough for that probably enough about 85 that there's probably enough about 70 or 80 cows in that tank so that should cover me i'd say i don't think i'll be going any more than that being honest that's honestly i don't want to um the paddle will be done as soon as we get around to it and what else i suppose yeah cow type cows are british region cows they're all british region type cows Um, there's obviously a lot of holstein region just now coming into the herd um, I probably will cross back now again to British region again off the Holstein because there is a nice bit of Holstein while a lot of the older cows are British region so I want to cross back to British region again and obviously there is there is a few jerseys in the herd there's obviously there's a lot of Jersey young stock this, there's four young Jersey young stock this year Jersey cross young stock and they'll be coming to the herd in 24 and the ones that are in calf, the heifers are in calf this year, they'll be coming to the herd 23. So exciting times for them. And reasons again, why I have them. Jerseys are here for health and solids. Get them in solids up. The British region type cows, they normally handle a lot of, they get a lot of, they do get, the older cows do get a lot of beef straws. So they are producing the cattle. And obviously the highest EBI cows, EBI being economic breeding index in Ireland, um, the highest genetic merit cows, which is what EBI is, they're getting all the sex semen freezing desires, along with the heifers are actually getting sex semen because they're high, they're high merit as well. But all the high cows, high merit cows are getting freezing sires, top quality sires, and they are all a mixture of Holstein Frisian, British Frisian, and um, obviously some dried crosses. The older cows get all beef straws because I don't really, I know people say you should breed off the older cows there. Some people do say that because they are producing and they are the best cows, but the younger cows are the highest EBI. And if you want to sell a heifer in the market or anywhere, the first thing nowadays, not everyone, but a lot of people are going to look at DBI. That's the first thing they're going to look at. DBI is low, they're going to say, nah, I don't want that because DBI is low, what you want to do in the future. And I totally understand that that's what everyone wants to do. And I see that every day when I'm out working um, doing do AI. EBI is becoming very popular now and it's becoming very big and that's what people want. They want EBI, they want high EBI cows, they want high EBI heifers. Their heifers like me, I, I want that as well. Um, I don't know. I do focus on it, but not as much as other people. I like to have the cow healthy and she produces some milk and she, and she has a good calf and, and she's happy and she's producing enough milk for me. Like my max milk, I don't want to do any more than 7,000 litres. I don't really want it to go up to 10,000 litres. I, I don't really want that. But 7,000 litres, it's like you do 500 kgs a meal in between. If they can get between 500 kgs and 700 kgs of ration, I'd be happy at that. I don't want any more than that. That's all I cost to do. And once they're happy with that, they're all producing for me they're all making money i'm not working for them but they're working for me that's the main thing and yeah so that's my video guys i'd like to thank everyone for watching um 
So that's a bit of background for new viewers because there's a lot of new viewers in the channel lately, a lot, and just they don't know, I suppose, like, it's fine to go back over the, like, most men want to go back over all the old videos and see the journey to now, but um, it's nice to update them again, start again, because, you know, we're coming, there's a, we're not far at the end of the year now, so there's, there's a lot of videos to do, so we'll get there. So guys, thanks for watching the video. Give it a like, give it a subscribe, Give me a subscribe and I'll see you all next one. Thanks. Bye.